Hi you guys, this is Allison hanging out in my space to craft. And um, there is a wedding this weekend um, that I can't go to because it's my daughter's, also my daughter's 18th birthday. So I'm gonna stay here for that. But I want to make a really nice card for the happy couple. Um, and a friend of mine is going to take it with her to the wedding. So I have all the supplies that I need on my desk. I have made a card base out of my Nina, Sol I think it's Nina Solar White, 110 pound. It's really heavy duty cards. Um, I have a piece of, I think this is 80 pound cover stock that I'm going to use um, for the part of the part of the card. So my plan is to make a heart-shaped shaker. So I have these hearts. The the only challenge on these hearts is that it gets really thin here at the bottom. So that's a little bit of a challenge when I go to use my um, adhesive foam tape. I'm also going to use um, my new Spellbinders uh, card basics um, uh, mat cutters. I'm going to do, everything's going to be uh, white and gold, I think is what I'm going to do for this. So I have a couple of different rose gold um, this is Sizzix paper, so I have this sort of matte and this glitter. Um, I think I'm, I haven't decided if I'm going to do this for the outside edge, which I really like, or if I want to use this for the outside edge, and then I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this for the outside edge, this for the hearts, and then um, I'm going to emboss the white. So it will just be simple, um, uh, simple color scheme, relatively simple layout. So I think that is my plan. So I'm going to emboss this first. I'm gonna cut it a little larger than I need. So I think I can cut it to the, to the, um, five and a half, because it will be a quarter inch smaller than that. So I cut this. Um, it actually wasn't one of my eight and a half by 11 cardstocks. It was a remnant from a larger piece. That's why I was a little confused there. Um, so I'm just cutting this to the true uh, card base size, and then I'll trim it down using um, the dies after I emboss it. I actually probably should have cut it before I embossed it because when I... Um, embossed it to do the cutting, um, it did smash some of the embossing. So I either should have just cut it and not um, used the second die. Probably would have had a little bit better outcome. But I did spray it, um, just a very light mist over it so that um, it helps eliminate any tearing from the um, 3D embossing. So now, and I took the wrong, it was supposed to be glitter paper, so I did it both in glitter and the regular paper. I do have to clean up these edges a little bit on this one. The glitter paper, sometimes that extra layer just doesn't cut through all the way. It's a little, um, you know, elastic. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and so I contemplate rerunning it through 
th this die, but um, I don't. I'm worried about getting it lined up. So it's, it's a little more subtle than the full 3D effect, but it still works. So just picking out my, my dies for the shaker box. I'm going to do it in the, the brushed gold. And I'm just, uh, there were some nibs on these dies that end up, that sometimes leave little holes. So I was just trimming those off. All right, so. Here we go, and I have an extra heart die from the inside that I'll just put in that envelope um, with the dies. I tend to make a lot of these gold heart dies, use a lot of them on different pages. So I decide that for the back of the die, I'm going to, or the back of the shaker card, I'm just, I'm going to do vellum um, just to provide it with some sort of back. Um, I could have done it straight onto the, the card and that would have worked as well. So this takes me a little bit of time. I don't have um, 16th of an inch or eighth of an inch um, tape. And I don't like to use wet glue for these because um, if it if it oozes out it can smudge on the acetate so I do prefer um, tape so I'm just these these hearts are, are so thin I'm just having to fuss around with it a little bit I think maybe just tape runner would have been a better solution, um, but I wanted to make sure that it stuck well. So put that on the acetate, and I do just hand cut the acetate. I don't love running the acetate through my dye machine. I suppose I could try it and see if it would work, but it doesn't take long with simple shapes like this. So now I have to build the dam. Um, and again, I don't have super thin adhesive tape so I'm just using my quarter inch adhesive tape and um, cutting it into strips and when you do the thin strips they they turn they curve pretty well especially if you take the top um, off I still have to trim a little bit where it gets super thin in a couple of areas so it's a little bit of a fussy process but it's all right. The important thing is to make sure that you don't have any gaps in your, um, in your foam adhesive when you're making a shaker pocket. And then I'm going to just collect different, some different gold sequins. I have several different gold tones, so I'm just adding a variety of those. Again, sticking to that sort of monochromatic. And these are some sort of soft cream uh, pearlized ones. I'm 
Just making sure none of them are stuck to the adhesive. And I'm just double checking that I have everything I want. I was looking to see if I had some white ones, but I don't really. All right. I need to. And there you have it. So that's ready to assemble now. All right, so I just have to had to go find my regular adhesive bottle, which I use um, art glitter glue. So before I put this together, I'm going to do my sentiment. I have some rose gold embossing powder and of course I forget to use the debossing powder so this first one I'm going to redo it has entirely too much gold on the paper so I just set that aside. I don't even emboss it, I toss it. So get out another piece of paper. I, I have a lot of trouble remembering <laughs> to use this powder before, um, before I emboss. And it's so handy and it helps so much. But this is the real world scrapbooking. I say it's my space to craft and it's out of the world this world's scrapbooking but it's not it's the real world and I make a lot of mistakes learn a lot of lessons multiple times you would think I would learn that the first time I just had one little section that had a little lump off it so that is now embossed and I'm just going to do a really plain treatment of this. I could have made it a little fancier, but I'm, I'm happy with the way it came out. So I'm just gonna trim this up. Make sure it's sort of centered and then glue it. So I'm gonna bring that glitter paper back as another mat for this. And so I'm going to add the same adhesive to the back of it, but let it sit on top of the heart. And then I decide I'll add a few extra sequins to the card. I do own a pick tool, but I think it was downstairs because I had let my daughter use it for something. All right, here we go. I think that's it. We'll take a few I'll hold it up to the camera so you can get a better look. Oh, after I put it on the card base. You can see it doesn't take much glue um, with this art glitter glue.
probably should have done that before I glued those extra sequins on, but that's okay. So here we are, a glittery, sort of monochromatic, golden white look for the wedding. Thanks a lot, you guys.